One got knocked down, he won't get up again The other went knocked him down One got knocked down, and now he's fucking dead The other went knocked him out Combo Breaker! You guys remember when I did that ninja free-for-all? I mean, yeah, I did it forever ago. Well, there were two ninjas that should have been on the roster, but I left them out because they are billions of times stronger than the rest of the roster, and it would have been unfair. But today, they will clash in one badass match. That's right, we have an epic ninja matchup between Ryu Hayabusa, the Ninja Gaiden, and Naruto, the last Hokage. Ryu Hayabusa. No, not the Ryu from Street Fighter. This is the, this is the Ryu from Ninja Gaiden. He's also a total badass, and her games his games are just really hard, okay? Ugh. Ryu has a lot of crazy powers, like his super senses. He also has a healing factor, and he can also freaking teleport, As and he's a master of what's called Ninpo, which is like ninja magic. He can use this for cool things like elemental attacks, such as, uh, such as Ryu, who learned to channel this in, uh, his inner body thing into heat, and then fire as a fireball projectile. He can also gather the cold, uh, cold elements in the air, creating big tornadoes of ice, summon huge fireballs, or magnify his own bioelectricity to shoot out freaking electricity towards his surrounding targets. He can also temporarily stop time and he can create a clone of himself that does exactly what he does. It mirrors his movements. Ryu also has, uh, Ryu's also gained the ability to assume the powers and abilities uh, from anyone he actually sees. Ryu is able to make himself immune to everything whilst casting Ninpo. He also has the ability to transform into a falcon, enabling him to travel anywhere around the world. He can create after images. He's able to tap into his guardian animal spirit, the Hayabusa spirit, that resurrects Ryu after he dies. Now, the Hayabusa spirit actually grants Ryu some other powers too, such as stopping the flow of time, as I mentioned earlier, creating a small scale black hole that quickly dissipates, and even jumping thousands of feet into the air. Ryu uh, carries a metric ass load of weapons, such as his shurikens, that come in incendiary and windmill variants. He also has his dragon claws, his dark dragon blade, and his tiger sword. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Tiger, or tiger fang, ha. He also has the, uh, whole bunch of other stuff like nunchucks, tanfas, and even the true dragon sword, as well as grappling hooks, howling cannon, a bow, spear gun, a whole bunch of other shit that isn't necessarily too useful. Now on to his special techniques. With his wind run technique, he's able to blindly sense his foes, uh, his enemies, where they are pretty much all the time, and he'll quickly be able to home in on the nearest enemy, even without the, uh, even without them being in, a, in his line of sight. He can freaking double jump. Oh, and he can run on water and on goddamn walls. He can also re uh, reflect. He goes to reflect things by carefully timing his slashes, and he's able to deflect projectiles such as arrows and fireballs back at his enemies with ease. He also has the art of flying fire wheels, a variation of the fire wheel art, except Ryu mentally focuses it, focuses and circling flames in an upwards direction, pretty much firing as a, a wheel of fire, as I said. There's also the art of the flame phoenix. This Nimpo art allows Ryu to convert his key to summon a sacred spirit of phoenixes who protect him and does a whole bunch of holy fire shit. It's awesome. He also create a huge dragon of pure key. Oh, you know what? That's that's just that's all the nimpo and whatnot I need to cover. Well, let's go ahead and cover his crazy shit that he's done. He's beaten the living version of the Statue of Frickin' Liberty. He's destroyed tanks and helicopters with nothing but a longbow. And using his nimpo, he killed a mountain-sized demon. He's defeated uh, the demon statue in the NES game, which was considered a planetary threat and capable of destroying the entire uh, country. And above using nuclear and above using nuclear weapons on. Also, he defeated Tengu uh, of Destruction, who's, dis who's pretty much able to destroy planets on its own. But more impressively, with the true dragon sword, Ryu is able to kill off Vigor, one of, uh, one of the dark dragons, and Vigor can easily cause a series of solar eclipses and split the world in half. There's also the dark dragon sword, which is on par with Vigor, and it can, uh, which can consume the world in darkness. Tengu has feats that are comparable, uh, that are on a comparable scale as well, and Ryu is also, uh, Ryu also fears using the true dragon sword because he wish, because he doesn't wish to destroy the earth. Now for this fight, we're gonna allow him to use it because, you know, bloodlust. But he's also pretty fast too. It's, it's, he can casually avoid and block bullets and m missiles as well, as well as uh, mini copters, jet crafts, and devastating attacks from demons, which could destroy armies with ease. He's escaped from a volcanic eruption, moves short distances so quickly that he leaves an afterimage of himself, plus he's capable of dodging and reacting to the, to the Guardian's lightning. Yeah, this dude's crazy. He survived fights with a very large building-sized demons. He can drop immense heights without injury or death. 
He survived being on uh, at ground zero of an explosion that consumed most of Mount Fuji. He can tank hits from uh, from things that can destroy mountains in one shot. And he's he's taken on Vigor and Tengu, who I've mentioned are planet busters. Ryu is skilled in combat too, as he's very knowledgeable in the field of weapons and is a master of Nimpo magic and knows how to wield virtually every weapon he has. And he's mastered all of them, including mastering all his martial arts as well. And honestly, he doesn't have any glaring weaknesses either. The man's a powerhouse. All right, listen up so that no one gets salty or confused in the comments or any of that. So this is a teenage Naruto in the War of the Arc Sage of Six Paths uh, the one who fought Sasuke, but I'm using the version, this version of Naruto because it's the most fair for this fight. Also, there will be no three-headed avatar allowed because this match needs to stay as fair as humanly possible. Now, I am not the biggest Naruto fan, and I, I didn't know very much about him before doing this episode, and I had a friend of mine who is a huge Naruto fan double-check all of my research on this, okay? Now, I'm not gonna lie, like I said, not a Naruto fan, but he checked all this research, okay? So let's hop right into what this ninja can do. Naruto has a healing factor, that, and he can manipulate his chakra, which is more like, it's like a more complicated version of Key from Dragon Ball Z, but more accurately, but more accurately, it's basically, it's how Naruto does all his crazy shit. So he has explosive tags that he can tag onto someone that causes an explosion, duh. He is also a master in using kunai and shurikens. So, he can use his chakra to amp up his physical stats, and he has a longer lifespan than most humans. He can transform into living beings and inanimate objects, and he can use this in battle to confuse his opponents and catch them off guard in a variety of ways, like that one technique that turns him into a naked woman because anime. He can create sol uh, solid shadow clones that are pretty much identical to him and can use their abilities as well as he can, and they can relay information that, he ga that they gain back to the original one upon being destroyed. Naruto can, <laughs> Naruto can also summon toads of varying sizes, some of which can crush and flatten targets from above, spew oil, and their mouths to uh, use their mouths to restrict movements of targets. They can also levitate, uh, he can also levitate and skillfully wield weapons and manipulate water, as well as utilize illusions and uh, among a whole bunch of other things. Naruto can also replace himself with an in inanimate objects in the vicinity to avoid damage, and he gains a boost in strength the angrier gets, just like the Hulk, except not as cool as the Hulk. He can create chakra arms and attack targets. He can uh, he can also you know use them to attack from a distance, which also grants him better mobility and maneuverability. His chakra has corrosive properties and can act as a force field as well. Naruto also has wind manipulation via his re Rasen Shuriken. He also can damage targets on a cellular level with this attack. Now Naruto can read minds of targets by making contact with them and connecting his chakra to there uh, to them. He can attack targets that enter his mind, and he's resistant to sleep inducement as he's resisted Itachi's attempt to put him to sleep, and he can even create illusions. He can sense attacks without directly seeing them and allowing him to appropriate, uh, appropriately dodge, and he can even detect targets over large distances. He's also able to uh, pretty much has this like weird form of petrification through his this weird power, where opponents who absorb excess amounts of natural energy from him without the ability to properly balance balance it will subsequently be turned to stone, which I still don't fully understand how that one works. He's resistant to status effects and the uh, and soul attacks, and he can breathe in space somehow. He can also summon poison and cross to seal, uh, ceilings. He has the power of flight, and he can basically become the next Aang with these kind of powers. I mean, think about it, he's just manipulating, manipulating every element. Freaking Avatar over here. <laughs> So he has fire, water, electricity, lava, and acid, and even ink for some reason. I don't understand how that one's useful. His sensory, uh, his senses are have the capability of uh, sensory capabilities are increased to the point where he can detect invisible clones that exist in another dimension, and he can manipulate magnetism at, uh, and steam for all sorts of useful attacks, and he can even create explosive toxic bubbles. He has the uh, he has the, tr the truth seeking balls, which are superior to Anaka's dust release, which turns targets to dust on a molecular level. His truth seeking balls can nullify ninjutsu's, which includes energy and elemental based attacks, and with the exception of those imbued with natural energy. So into some notable techniques, Naruto can create tangible shadow clones that can fight and use their own techniques. He can also create an ass load of these things, like we're talking thousands at a time. He has the Rasinga, which is a ball of chakra that use, that's used to dish out immense amounts of damage and can be turned to the Rasing Shuriken for extra damage. Naruto has a stage mode transformation, which the, he basically this results in him using natural energy along with his ninja's normal chakra 
in a perfect balance, basically allowing him to amp up his own strength. With the Six Sage Path mode, he can basically access his chakra directly whenever he needs it without interacting with the beast at all. With, you know, and a whole bunch of other shit, it basically increases all of his stats significantly. He also has a whole bunch of other modes, like the Hum- I'm sorry, I'm gonna mispronounce this. Humadioe Buji mode, and he has the Sage Transformation. He's strong enough to- now, here's, here's some crazy feats right now. He's strong enough that Tor, uh, he basically tore off Obito's chakra arms alongside Minito, and he fought him head on and created a moon with the help of Sasuke. Satsuki. <laughs> Sasuke. Can't speak today. After he absorbed chakra from the tailed beast. He's fast enough to blitz cursed se uh, seal level 1 Sa Sasuke, he's, and several times, my add. He's kept up with the De <laughs> Deva path, and he's kept up with third Rikage, and dodged the fastest punch, uh, and dodged his fastest punch, and he was on par with Madra, which is pretty crazy. He survived attacks from a uh, partially transformed Gara, and uh, Naruto took the full blunt of Ju Jubi's uh, Jubies alone, and he flew through uh, the 80 gods vacuum attack and was unharmed. Naruto's pretty smart, as he, I mean, he acts headstrong and he's often acts without thinking. However, Naruto's years of pranksters give him a cunning Im uh, imagination as useful for battle. He's got remarkable tact, he's a remarkable tactical uh, learner, and he's able to learn better through uh, actually like fighting and doing tasks rather than, you know, just theorizing about it. But he is flawed. You know, there's He's only got so much chakra he's got to work with, and his clones, why he can make a lot of them at the same time that uses his chakra as well. Naruto wanders the woods to see all the dead bodies from the previous ninja free-for-all. A ninja star flies at Naruto, who dodges back as the star hits the ground in front of him. Ryu hops down from a large tree and draws his sword. Naruto runs over and goes to punch at Ryu, but he catches his fist and follows up with a sucker punch, and then he swings his head horizontally, cutting off Naruto's head. The Naruto then dissipates into smoke, leaving nothing but a blo uh, wooden block. Naruto rushes behind Ryu. Ryu turns and shoves his claws into Naruto's head, causing the clone to dis disappear. Thousands of Naruto clones jump out of trees holding Rasengas. Ryu charges his blade and flies forward, cutting a path through them all, uh, as all the clones collide on the ground, blowing, up, blowing them up in a huge explosion. Naruto then throws a kunai at Ryu, catches it between his fingers. Naruto jumps, uh, jumps out and kicks the sword from his hand and follows up with a spin kick, sending Ryu flying against a tree. Naruto creates another clone that goes to punch Ryu, but he's blocked by a second Ryu cloaked in red that cuts him in half diagonally. Naruto puts his hands up to charge a Rasing Shuriken. Ryu unsheaths a new sword and so does the clone. Naruto throws a kunai at Ryu who then reflects them. Naruto takes this time to jump and shove the Rasing gun into the face of Ryu, causing an explosion that levels the forest. Naruto looks at Ryu, stands back up, spins his blade, causing a large dragon to form around it. It then flies at Naruto, who jumps on the dragon and then runs up its back. He then hops into the air and starts to glow yellow. Ryu launches a ring of fire at Naruto, who stands still and stops the ring before landing. Naruto grabs a black rod and rushes at Ryu, who flips back and dodges, and Naruto slams it down towards him. Ryu stops, for a mo uh, stops time for a moment, dashes past Naruto, and turns to look at Naruto from behind. Time flows again as Naruto falls on one knee. Naruto turns and throws a kunai into Ryu's back, but he stands back up. They stare at one another. They stare one another down before dashing forward and jumping in the sky, swinging their weapons full speed as they dash past each other. They both land on the ground, back uh, with their backs facing each other. As Naruto falls to the ground, bleeding with a large gash across his chest, Ryu sheaths his blade as Naruto dies. Our winner is Ryu Hayabusa. Now wait, wait, wait. Stop right there. This match was incredibly close, like close as hell. But I I consulted my friend who is a Naruto fan, as I said, to double check my research on him and even double check this reasoning. So allow me to explain why Naruto loses this fight. Starting with strength and durability, this goes to Ryu being a planet buster. As he's fought planet the planet busting Tengu, and his strongest sword is capable of destroying the planet, according to Ryu. Now Naruto clocks in at small planet level as he helped create a moon and fought Sasuke. Uh, Fought Sasuke after Sasuke has absorbed a whole bunch of chakra from the uh, from the tailed beast. So now on to speed. Ryu clocks in at massive hypersonic as he constantly reflects and dodges missiles, gunfire, and lightning. Naruto is typically massively, hyper, uh, massively hypersonic as he's seen to keep up with the dev's path, but even he can get, although he can get up to sub relativistic speeds as seen with his match with Madra, but that's only in his higher up forms. So now let's talk the interesting part of this battle. Arsenal and Nimpo versus Naruto's Arsenal and uh, Chakra. The safe 
It's safe to say that Ryu takes a huge arsenal advantage with his swords, throwing blades, claws, etc. Whereas Naruto has what? Some explosive tags, some shurikens, and some kunai? Yeah, pretty much Ryu takes this uh, the arsenal win no problem. So now Ninpo versus Chakra. This is where they can counter one another quite well. Naruto and Ryu can both create clones, but Ryu can only make one that does his exact movements, whereas Naruto can make thousands of clones that can move on their own and do their own thing. So while this is uh, kind of an advantage for Naruto, Ryu has ways to counter this. Remember I mentioned that speed advantage? Well, Naruto has that speed advantage, which is pretty good. Well, Ryu can stop time, which would allow him to land a fatal blow on Naruto, potentially ending the fight right there. So even though he has a speed advantage, that's only in his best forms, whereas Ryu could just stop time for a moment and go and kill him. Now, they both have almost godlike super senses, which makes sneak attacks and pretty much anything next to impossible to use. Now, while... Nin While Naruto's chakra gives them elemental control, Ryu's Ninpo also gives him similar skills. And they both, and you know, both him and Naruto can shapeshift, so pretty much everything there. But Naruto and Ryu counter each other very, very well with their chakra versus Ninpo. But here's where we talk about some interesting stuff. Ryu's Ninpo will allow him to A, come back after death thanks to his Hayabusa spirit. I'll only allow this once for the sake of debate, but that's still, uh, Naruto would have to manage to kill Ryu twice. And he's able to copy other people's abilities with his Ninpo. While this may not work on certain ninja tactics that Naruto uses, I could see it working on things like the Rasinga. It would just, you know, be a different variation of the Rasinga for, uh, for Ryu to use. So with Ryu having better strength dur uh, and durability and Naruto having speed, they're pretty close, but Ryu has ways around Naruto's speed with his time stopping and super senses, plus coming back to life if he is to if Naruto is to get lucky. Now if you keep now keeping that in mind, Naruto doesn't really have a way to combat the strength and durability advantages that Ryu has. Now keep in mind that Naruto, I am using his best stats from his best form when I talk about his strength and durability. But Ryu's time stop and clone of his would allow him to get around Naruto's things and would allow him to kill him quite easily. Keep in mind, these are the best stats, so don't comment that Naruto could transform and raise his stats. Now, through this episode, I can see how strong Naruto is, and I have a little bit more respect for him as a character, which, you know, is that's a pretty difficult thing, because I'm not exactly a Naruto fan. Now, one last thing. Naruto does stand a good chance. There are scenarios where he could win this fight, and keep in mind, I put multiple restrictions on Naruto. Like I said, this is a certain arc in the story, and I removed his avatar thing and did a whole bunch of shit to nerf Naruto down to, uh, down to a level where Ryu could stand a chance. So, you know, don't get angry that I purposely downplayed Naruto, because I did limit him, and this is one of the only times I've ever limited a character to make the fight more fair. So, our winner is Ryu Hayabusa. First of all, let me thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this to any friends you know who like versus debates. And, uh, you know, tell me what you think of the next match. Give me your predictions, maybe suggest matches in the comments, and they might happen.